Yes. And we say in Jesus' name that your people will receive a rhema word this morning. We're open and we're receptive to receive directly from your throne. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Before you sit down, I want you to look at a few people around you and tell them, can't touch this. Can't touch this. Oh, you do Yep. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm so excited. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Everybody say that with me one more time. Can't touch this. Y'all know y'all finna just break out in a song right there, wouldn't y'all? Hallelujah. 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 On January 13, 1990, there was a man by the name of M.C. Hammond. He was a pop singer who went on to write a lot of different songs, but one song in particular sold 18 million copies. And this song was called, Can't Touch This. He wrote the song as a representation of, of, of his articulation that each and every person around him couldn't touch his artistry. See, but if we go all the way back to biblical times, the father said this way before, M.C. Hammer said this. The father said, you can't touch this well before M.C. Hammer said it. Amen. See, because he said in Zechariah chapter 2, verse 9, whoever touches you touches the apple of my eye. So do you know how valuable you are? Do you know how loved you are? Do you know how cared for you are? Everybody say, you can't touch this. Can't, can't touch, touch this. Put that on real quick. Hey. Oh. See, I ain't got my big pants in here, bro. Oh. I ain't got my big pants in here. Hey. Hey, y'all know y'all do one. <laughs> Stop right there. Y'all y'all couldn't help it. Y'all went, uh, uh, y'all was going to go get it real quick. <laughs> can't can't touch this raise your hand if you know without a shadow of a doubt that the father is your protector Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah but at some times in your life you kind of feel like Lord uh, I, I can't feel you I can't, I can't feel you but let me suggest something to you God is not a feeling God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, John 4, verse 24. Stop focusing on your feelings. Amen. Your feelings are fickle. They're futile. They're misleading. And don't even trust your heart because the Bible says that the heart is deceitful. Above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Jeremiah 17, verse 9. The Father has a supernatural hedge of protection around your life. Amen. There is a shield around you. And the Bible says in Psalms 119, verse 114, you are my refuge and my shield. I have put my hope in your word. Yeah. He didn't say I put my hope in a feeling. He didn't say I put my hope in all of these physical five things that I can see with my senses or channel with my senses. What I can see, touch, taste, smell, and hear. No, 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 no. He said I put my hope in your word. Everybody say I'm standing on the word. I'm standing on the word. What word are you standing on? What word are you standing on that you know, you know what, the Father is speaking to me in this season on this word and this word alone. See, we can have a ton of scriptures, but you need one scripture that you're standing on. Amen. Everybody say, I'm standing on the word. Standing on the word. I'm going to stand on it real quick. No. I'm standing on the word, right? No. No, 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 no. I don't care how much you try to stand on it physically, you have to get it in you spiritually. Right, man. Amen. Amen. The word of God has to be in your heart. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against Amen. you. You have to treasure it in your chest. Yep. This is a treasure chest. Yeah. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Let's start off by going to 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 22. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Chronicles, 16. chapter 16, Amen. verse 22. First Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 22. Can't touch this. Say that with me one more time. You can't touch this. Can't touch this. 
What's the first three words? Do not touch. Do not touch my gifted ones. Amen. Is that what it says? It says my gifted ones, right? Because we live in a society today where everybody wants to focus on a gift. Charisma. Everybody say charisma. Charisma is where we get the word charismatic from. And there's a lot of people who focus solely on the gifts, and the spirit is nowhere there. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke, not the gift. There's a lot of gifted individuals that are going to find themselves right in front of the gates of hell. It's not about a gift. It's about the anointing that the Father has smeared and rubbed and doused you with. Because that's what's going to ward off the enemy. The enemy doesn't respond to a gift. He responds to the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Isaiah 10 verse 27. Do not touch my anointed ones. And do my prophets no harm. Now, that's a specific group of people. He said my prophets. So that's a clear indication that there were other prophets. And if I'm not the father's prophet, then that will label me as a false prophet. A prophet is not just an individual that's going to walk up and tell you your social security number. Get that out of your head. Anytime I speak from this word of God and I say, well, thus says the Lord, I have just become his prophet. I have just become his spokesperson. Jeremiah, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I appointed you. I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nation, a spokesperson to the nation, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. A prophet is going to always point you in the direction that you need to go. Everybody say, can't touch this. Can't touch this. Do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophet no harm. Amen. And let me suggest something to you. Just because you don't walk up to them and touch them physically, you better keep your mouth off of them too. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? I don't care. I don't care if that person has lost the anointing because you can't lose the anointing. Everybody say, give me Bible on that. King Saul. The kingdom was ripped from him and given to a man who was after God's own heart. 1 Samuel 13, verse 14. Is this making sense to you? So if you're speaking negatively or towards, uh, against an anointed vessel, a uh, man or woman of God, you better make sure that you go back to your prayer closet and you repent of that. We have so many people who are walking around with loose lips and you're just releasing anything into the atmosphere. Even David was a man that was anointed, but he did not owe you some authority and start speaking negatively uh, against King Saul. He blessed him. And the Bible says to bless those who curse you. Right. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Hey. Hey. Psalms 105, verse 15. Psalms 105, verse 15. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalms 105, verse 15. Thank you, Jesus. Go there in the message translation for me. Psalms 105, verse 15 in the message translation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Don't you dare lay a hand on my anointed. Don't hurt a hair on the heads of my prophets. Do you know that the Bible says in Luke 12, verse 7, that the very hairs on your head are all numbered? Amen. Yep. Yes. The very hairs on your head are all numbered. Now, I did a study, and the, the, the human head, yeah, yeah, the human head, the average human, the average human, we got only, uh, the average human <laughs> has 100,000 hair follicles. 100,000. So if, if, if one of those hairs were missing, if two of those hairs were missing, if three of those hairs were missing, God would know that that's hair number 13,526. The hairs on your head are all numbered. So do not be afraid. God is that precise. And when he made you, he broke the mold. When he made you, he made it so nothing or no one can penetrate the hedge that's around your life. Job said in Job chapter 1 verse 10 that there's a hedge around you, your household, and everything that you possess. Amen. Nothing can penetrate that supernatural hedge. And you have to have a reverential fear of who the Father is because it is possible for you to break the hedge according to Ecclesiastes 10 verse 8. And anyone who breaks a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. When that hedge is broken, you give the enemy legal access to enter into your life. 
and have his way to sink his tentacles into your life. Is this making sense to y'all? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Were, uh, go to Psalms chapter 5. Psalms chapter 5, verse 4. Psalms chapter 5, verse 4. Go there in the, uh, in the message translation for me. Psalms chapter 5, verse 4. Psalms chapter 5, verse 4, in the message translation. Yeah. Everybody say, don't break the hedge. Don't break the hedge. Psalms chapter 5, verse 4. You don't, you don't socialize with wicked or invite evil over as your house guests. Now, let me tell you something. It ought to shake up somebody who's walking in darkness to even step foot on your premises. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me? It ought, to shake, it ought to shake them up. If these people are walking, uh, 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 if these people are walking according to the dictates of the flesh, it ought to shake them up if you're a person who's living by the spirit of the living God. See, see you open in and see, and, 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 and it's not just about a physical person. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. When I open myself up to scary movies, when I open myself, hallelujah, yeah. <laughs> somebody yanked that real quick. When I open myself up to scary movies, when I open myself up to phone conversations and I know I shouldn't be engaging them, that's inviting evil into your home. That's a house guest because now you have those familiar spirits that has just intervened on your behalf and now before you know it, they have sunk their tentacles into your life. Now you're feeling some type of way because you can't go to sleep at night because the TV turning on and off. Okay, okay, okay. You gave, you gave it legal access to enter in. We were, everybody say true story. Uh, a while ago, they had a circus that came around here. And when this circus came in, uh, Caleb and I, we, you know, and, and his mom, we were, we were preparing to go. And we, as soon as we get on the premises, Caleb started saying, uh, Dada, Caleb's house. He said, I want to go home. I said, what you mean you want to go home? I said, well, son, we're going to go here for just a split second. And he said, Caleb's house. Like, I wonder why he's saying this. So we end up going to the circus, and we sit there for a few. And as soon as we sit there, it seems like everything was going fine. But all of a sudden, we start hearing some scary music playing. And as soon as we start hearing the scary music playing, this guy runs out with a scream mask on. And then before you know it, Caleb turns and puts his head on me. And I said, son, I missed it. I am so sorry. I am so, so sorry. And this, the Bible says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have perfected praise. He already knew it before we hit the premises that someone's going to be right. So me and his mom are sitting there like, Lord Jesus, I said, son, I said, it won't happen again. If I hear you say something, I'm going to act upon it. See, that's our problem as parents. We just talk on, you ain't going on with all that. You better listen to your babies. Because a lot of times they got more sense than we do. They're in the spirit. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Amen. Everybody say, I can't open myself up to it. Why? Because as soon as I open myself up to it, I have just given the enemy legal access, legal access, not illegal, legal access to enter in and sink his tentacles into my life. Is this making sense to y'all? Amen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Psalms. 119 verse 60, 164. Psalms 119 verse 164. Now watch this. God's protection is tied to his principles. God's protection is tied to his principles. What is a principle? A universal truth that's changeless. A principle is a universal truth that is changeless. His protection is predicated on his principles. You have to make sure that you're within, you're within the confines of this gospel in order for this hedge to work in your life. Because as soon as you get outside of the hedge, now the Father is just going to let you do what you want to do. So you can't get upset with him when something doesn't go your way. Because you've broken the hedge. And now you give the, the enemy legal access and you're free game to him. Amen. Psalms 119 verse 164. David says seven times a day. Who I do what? I praise you. For your what kind of laws? Right. For your righteous laws. Everybody say, I got to step it up. I got to step it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I worship him for who he is, but I praise him for what he's done. Amen. I worship him for who he is, but I praise him for what he's already done in my life. Seven times a day, I praise you for your 
righteous, your righteous laws. When Ms. Shawana and I first got married, she had a little, she had a little girl with her. And this little girl was something else. Her name was Latavia. And I'm talking about me and this girl were like you could just cut the tension in the household. Like it was, to, man, look, it took years. This was nothing but the power of God. This kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. Amen. There had to be some hands laid on. There had to be oil slung all over the house. Because she had a strong will. And she, I'm telling you, she didn't want anything to come in between her and her mom's relationship. So, so, so we would walk by each other in the house like complete strangers. And, and mind you, I'm paying the phone bill. I'm providing the food for her, and I'm still looking at her like she's a whole stranger in my house. But then one day, a complete eruption took place. When she looked at me, I just saw just such a fear and a timidity on the inside of her eyes. When I looked at her and I said, look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not them. Can I be real with y'all this morning? Amen. I said, I'm not them. And I said, whoever it was, you need to forgive them. This girl broke all the way down. And I told her, I said, look, have you ever seen me do anything to your mom that will contradict what this word is saying? And she was like, no. And I said, well, give me a chance. Give me a chance. And then, and then we fast forward, hallelujah. And as soon as we end up fast forwarding, what ends up happening in this situation, you guys, with my little girl, by this time, me and her, she done found herself, she done found herself with a child. And she didn't even tell us. It's summertime and she walking around with all these sweaters and stuff on. I said, and her mama, she must be hot. She just, yeah, she just cold. I said, girl, it's 110 degrees outside. What is she cold for? I said, Tommy Dodge, and I said, I see it. I see it in the spirit. Red, red, red. Said, I see it. And so, and so she, she, she ends up, you know, she ends up bobbing and weaving and dunking us and things like that. And I'm in prayer one morning, and I said, Lord, just give me the opportunity. Give me the opportunity to be with her one-on-one. -on -one. So I get with her one-on-one, -on -one, and Shawana was like, well, can you take her to the bus stop this morning? I said, yep, sure thing. I end up taking her to the bus stop, and I looked Tommy directly in her eyes. And when I looked in her eyes, I said, I know. And this girl just, <laughs> just broke all the way down. Broke all the way down. So she on the bus going to school, and I'm texting her back and forth. We texting, and she she on the phone, and I'm, I'm like, man, I'm like, well, Tommy, man, what, what new? I said, well, look, man, I said, when you go to school, this, this, is, this is the conversation. Everybody say true story. True story. This is the conversation. I'm like, Tommy, well, man, why? Well, I'm going to go get a pregnancy test. Yes. Now, look, I ain't never in my life bought no pregnancy test. <laughs> but love will make you do something like that. <laughs> So I'm, look, Shawana know nothing about this. This is a conversation that me and Tavi had. So look, I end up going to the store. <laughs> I'm talking about as soon as I, as soon as I left the bus, bus stop. I'm the first person in there. And then I heard her throw it on the thing. And so she comes home, and as soon as she comes home, I end up giving it to her. And, and, and I told Shawana, I said, we're going to go to the store real quick. We're going to go to the subway. And so we end up going to Subway, and as soon as we go to Subway, uh, 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 well, we really didn't go to Subway. I took her to her friend's house to go do the test. So she comes back, and as soon as she comes back, she's like, oh, uh, it's positive. I was like, man, hold on, like in math? Positive? <laughs> she was like, oh, it's positive. And she looked at me, and she cried. Like she looked at me, and she said, what we going to say? I said, what we going to say? <laughs> I said, we ain't finna say nothing. I said, you finna tell her what you did. <laughs> so all of this was things that we went through, you guys. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Yeah. All of these things that we were going through, we were going through these things for preparation. Yeah. But Tavi was getting the word on the inside of her. Yeah. Heavily. Yeah. And we told her, anytime you step out, you subject. Yeah. The enemy wants you, baby girl. Because you got too much word on the inside of you, even at the age that you are. We filling you with the word. You knowing scriptures by memorization, and you 
know, so you know the enemy wants to have a field day with you. So she, she ends up getting me this, you guys. She ends up giving me this. And I told her, I said, I'm going to cherish this. She gave me this for one Father's Day. And when she gave me this for, one, for, for, for the Father's Day, man, y'all don't realize the story that's attached to this cup. Amen. Because it was times where she would be sitting like this and her whole body would turn and her head would be right there. And like we would literally, we would literally almost go for blows in the house. And I'm a full grown man. I'm, I'm just being real with you. But all the while, what you say, girl? She'll take you there. Uh, yes, she will. She used to try to take you. See, we ain't, we ain't gonna start that little nose, start sweating. <laughs> but there's a hedge. There's a supernatural hedge that's around our lives. Yes. I was in um, I was in Oklahoma, and uh, and we had a snow day, and there was a friend of mine who kept asking me to go home with him. I said, man, I'll, uh, I said, man, let me, I'll think about it, man. Let me, let me, let me think about it. So he's on his way home. You know, we count the classes were canceled and everything like that. And he ends up going. And I just decided to stay in my dorm at this day. So he ends up giving me a call. And when he gives me a call, he said, huh. Like, man, what's going on, bro? He said, man, I just had an accident. I said, you, I said, you good? He said, I'm going to send you the picture over. On my way home, I, 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 I swerved off the road, man, and, and, and it wasn't too good. I said, well, I said, well, well, send me the picture over. He ends up sending me the picture over. His side of the car was perfect. It didn't have a scrape on it, but the side where I would have been sitting was completely and totally crushed. There's a hedge of protection around your life. Amen. That is the supernatural power of God. You can't tell me that he's not there by your side every step Amen. of the way. Don't you focus on the feeling. You dispatch your angels every chance that you get. Yes. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 103 verse 20 that angels hearken to the voice of his word. Amen. Angels are hearkening. Angels are here now. And just because you can't see them, just because you can't trace them, you have to trust that when you release the word of God, they're activated. Amen. Is this making sense to y'all? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14 says, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who inherit salvation? Yes. And the Bible says that there's more with us than with them. 2 Kings 6, verse 16. Amen. Raise your hand if you really dispatch your angels every morning and you get up. Amen. You better release them angels. Amen. Release them. Right. Release them. <laughs> Don't be lazy. You have to release them. Amen. So, so there's a story. Everybody says a true story. true story. There's a story about this woman. Hallelujah. And she, she was a newbie in Christ. She was a newbie in Christ. And what ended up happening was, you know, there was a guy who tried to break into her home. And as soon as he breaks into her home, she's living by herself. And, and, and he, she, she turned in the middle of the night and she sees this guy and he's trying to rush her. So she yells out really, really loud, Acts 238! Acts, Acts 238! She didn't know what it said, but she just released the scripture verse into the atmosphere. And she said as soon as she said that, as soon as she said that, she 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 automatically had a a, a, a thing where, where where the police officer would come and then she had neighbors and stuff like that too. But she said, Acts 238. And she said that the man just froze. He froze. And so said that the police officer ended up coming and they found him like in a shock, a shock state. He tried to run outside, but he just couldn't move because he was so stuck. And they put him in back of the cop car, and they said, well, sir, why in the world, why in the world didn't you follow through with what you was following through? He said, well, that woman said she had an ax in 238. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't care how the father protects you, he's going to protect you. Is this making sense to you? Whatever it looks like, the father is going to be there every step of the way for you and for your household and for everything that you possess. Is this making sense to you? Yes. Angels are on assignment in your life. 
Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name. I want you to go to Daniel chapter 6, verse 22. Daniel chapter 6, verse 22. Daniel chapter 6, verse 22. Now up until this point, up until this point, Daniel had individuals that were conspiring against him because he was faithful to the Lord his God. And what ended up occurring in this situation was they told King Darius. And as a result of that, the king could not go back on his word, so they ended up throwing Daniel into the lion's den. And as soon as they threw Daniel into the lion's den, the king was restless. He couldn't sleep that night. He denied the entertainment from coming to him. He denied all of the delicacies. And he really, really had a relationship with Daniel. But we get to verse 22. And right before that, the king says, uh, uh, Daniel, did the Lord in whom you trust, did he deliver you or did he rescue you from the lions last night? And Daniel said, my God sent his angel. Everybody say his angel. Yes. His angel. Is that singular or plural? That's singular. That's one angel. My God, excuse me, sent his angel and he shut the mouths. Uh oh. One angel shut mouths. That's plural. That's more than one. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lion. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever, nor have I ever done any wrong before you, O king. I brought you to this scripture because just yesterday I get a call and I can't explain it the way he can explain it. I want you to come up here, Mr. Gerald, and I want you to explain this for me because this is nothing but the power of God. Amen. It's an operation. Amen. This is nothing but the supernatural power of God. Let's go. All right. Friday we were uh, working some cows, and before we went there, the people, we knew that they were really, really mean Bramer cows. Mean. We didn't take any horses or anything, and the lady got them in the pen, and we were going to get them in a trailer. And we had uh, we had put up some uh, real stout uh, cow panels. Heavy duty, not these little ones that you buy at TSC, but heavy duty ones. And we fenced off a little bit here, and then we, we put some, got some of the cows to go in to this side of the pen, and some stayed over there. And we had a rope tied on the gate, and a friend of mine, he was trying to pull the gate open so the cows could get up in the chute. Well, the gate got hung up, and he couldn't pull it. So, we're standing around and I said, okay, let me jump over the fence right quick and I'm gonna unhook that gate so he can pull it. Mm -hmm. So I jumped over the fence and just as I jumped over the fence, now mind you, I'm in a protected area. The heavy duty uh, cow panel is like right, say about right here. And I'm about to make a step over here and I see this big Bramer bull he just kind of walked out of the herd a little bit, and I thought, well, he's good. And when I turn like this, that's the last thing I need. Mm -hmm. mm. He ran full speed about from here to Maria, hit that uh, cow panel. The cow panel and him hit me, and I went, we measured it, it was 18 feet. I flew Jeez. in the air. <laughs> into the pen where the other mean Bramer cows were. And I'm talking mean. Mm -hmm. I mean, you ain't gonna pet them. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm laying there on my back with my, they said I had my arms up and I'm just laying on the back. And they're all standing around and they get like mesmerized because they're like, they can't figure out why these cows can't touch me. Mm. 
they would they would run up to me and blow and snort and mm. know anything about cattle. Mm. They would blow and snort, and then they would step over me, jump over me, and and they and finally the guys go, hey, we gotta get him out of there. <laughs> so they cut the strings and opened the got the gate open just a little bit. They said it, they just barely got it open. And they came out of the pen, and every one of them jumped right over me. Mm. Uh, Never touched me. Wow. Yeah. They God. jumped right over me. Praise God. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Come on. <laughs> and I got told CW. That's a miracle. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You know about Canada. You got that hedge of protection around you. I mean, even though I did get, you know, but. Kind of like Joe, you ain't going to kill him. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's it. That's it. That's it. So, even knowing that, that you know, you have to be careful. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Just come up to me like, hey, Joe, what is it? What is it, man? He said, yeah. I cannot believe the come cows on. never That's touched right. Come on, man. Hey, man, step over you here, step over here. And I had a, on my hat, I had a hole in the brim. So you know how close that is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. But they all just stepped over. And he said, and when we turned them out, he said, everyone just jumped right How over. many cows were in a pen? I think it was about 15. Ooh, wow. wow. And none of them. <laughs> Everybody say can't touch it. <laughs> man, let's go. Hallelujah. You can't tell me that that's not God. be explained he has to be experienced Amen. that was an experience right there that they had off of you Amen. you're not even supposed to be here right now you're walking testimony how much is how much is one cow weigh 1500 pounds snorting at you was that not your lion then you was in was that not Hallelujah. Y'all praise God for this. Hallelujah. And I know, and I know he got a wife that put that word on him every day. Every day. Hallelujah. Everybody say God is real. God is real. Yeah, yeah. God is real. Matthew 26, verse 52. Matthew 26, verse 52. Matthew 26, verse 52. Raise your hand if you need this this morning. God is y'all's protector, man. He's by our side every step of the way. Every step of the way. Matthew 26, verse 52. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. So good. So good. Hallelujah. This is after day, uh, this is after Peter struck the ear of the high priest's servant, Malchus. And Jesus said, look, 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 look. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him. For all who draw the sword will do what? Will die by, will die by the sword. Everybody say the physical weapon. The physical weapon. Now let's go to verse 53. Do you think I cannot call on my father? And he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. Hallelujah. Everybody say the spiritual weapon. The spiritual weapon. I have the physical and I have the spiritual right there, 52 and 53. I'm going to tell you something. A bullet can't do anything with an angel. It can't do anything with an angel if you really and truly believe it. The Bible says in Isaiah 37, verse 36, that one angel slew 185,000 Assyrian army members. One angel. 
And he said more than 12 legions of angels. If you know anything about a legion in, in, in the Roman regiment, it's anywhere from 2,000 to 6,000 foot soldiers. Anywhere from 2,000 to 6,000 foot soldiers. And one angel slew 185,000 Assyrian army members. I'm drilling this into you because I want you to know the protection that the Father has on your life. Amen. The protection that is over your, over your life. Deuteronomy 28, verse 7. Deuteronomy 28, verse 7. Caleb was on the porch the other day. And he's just sitting down and just talking. And, you know, Caleb gets excited. And he's right there on the edge of the porch. And he almost slips. And I'm like, Lord have mercy. So all I do is, you know, instinctually, I grab him before he hits the ground. And Caleb, he said, like, ooh, he said, Daddy, save the day. <laughs> Daddy, save the day. And I thought about something. I said, man, let me equate that to my Heavenly Father. Because any time he brings us out of situation, we ought to be like, woo, Daddy, save the day. <laughs> Hallelujah. He rescued me from the mouth of the lion. Daddy, save the day. He rescued me from that abusive relationship. Daddy, save the day. He rescued me from all those people talking and backbiting against me. Daddy, save the day. He saved the day. Hallelujah. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. Amen. That's God's promise. That's God's promise to those who are obedient to him, those who are obedient to him. How do I know that I love the Father? The Bible says if you love him, you will obey his commands. John 14, verse 15. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction. Everybody say one direction. One direction. That means that they will come to you, come come for you in unison, but flee from you in seven. Amen. <laughs> then they'll just scatter. Oh, they're gonna all come together. That's what they did with Daniel. The Bible says that they went as a group and found Daniel praying to the Lord and asking him for help. Daniel six verse eleven. They went as a group, but all of them were scattered. When the Father showed his hand. Because nothing can say no flesh can glory before the presence of God. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.29. Is this making sense to God this morning? Yes. A scripture that I stand on. I speak over my family. I speak over my life. I speak over each and every last one of y'all that are connected to open arms. And those who are genuinely connected through the airway. I declare Psalms 91 verses 1 through 16 on a daily basis. You have to not just quote it. You have to believe it. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shelter of the Almighty. This I declare the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I am trusting him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from the fatal plague. He will shield you with his wings. He will shelter you with his feathers. His faithful promises are your arm and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor for the dangers of the day, nor dread the plague that's called in darkness or the death that's like at midday. So a thousand fall at your side. So ten thousand are dying around you. These evils will not touch you, but you will see with your eyes. You will see how the wicked appoint if you make the Lord your refuge. If you make the Lord your show. No evil will come to you. No plague will come to your dwelling. For he orders his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you with their hands to keep you from striking your foot on the stone. You will trouble down lines and poison this state. You will curse with lines and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love you. I will protect those who trust in my name. And when they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. I will satisfy them with a long life and give them my salvation. Hallelujah. On a daily basis, I'm quoting that. That has to be in your heart. And even if you don't know what to say and how to say it, you better open this word up and release it into the atmosphere until you do get it into your heart. Is this making sense to you? You got to get the word on the inside of you to be able to ward off the enemy because he's not going to respond to opinion and he's not going to respond to your emotions, your quotes, or your cliches. The word has to go forth. And that's what we're lacking in the body of Christ nowadays. We take it any way we possibly can. We just lay down anytime we hear the enemy say something. Do you know that the scripture says that he prowls around like a roaring lion, yep. seeking who he may devour. Yep. Like, Miss Linda, it never says that he's a lion. Right. It never says that when he's yelling, that means to let out a loud and inarticulate cry. And that's exactly what the enemy does. And who cries when they don't get their way? Babies do. That's right. And that's what the enemy is doing. Open his mouth up and there ain't no, ain't no kind of teeth there. <laughs> gummy, gummy bow. <laughs> Boy, y'all something else. A gummy bow. Sean, you pulled that one. Uh, <laughs> Golly. 
Well, y'all are God, I love your word. Let's go to um, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Go there in the Amplified Version for me. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Y'all get something this morning? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Everybody say, fear not. Fear not. Fear not. There is nothing to fear. For I am with you. Everybody say that's personal. It's personal. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen and hard you to difficulties. Now, it never says that difficulties wouldn't come. I am not going to be a preacher that sit up here and to talk you out of process. I'm not going to be a preacher that stands up here and tell you that you're not going to have difficulties. Yeah, you're done. many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of them all. Here on earth you will have tribulations, but take heart because I have overcome the world, John 16, 33. Yeah. You're going to have situations, but the difference now is that you have the angel of the Lord encamped around about you. Amen. You're not doing it in your own strength anymore. Is this making sense to you? He said, I will strengthen and ho I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. It never said that the difficulties wouldn't come. Yes, I will help you. Yes. I will hold you up and restrain, res, retain you with my, let's go to the next. My victorious, everybody say victorious. victorious. Victorious right hand of righteousness and justice. Unending riches, honor, justice, and wealth are mine to distribute, according to Proverbs 8, verse 18. That's the father that we serve, and those are his promises. He said, I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties, but he started off by saying, do not be afraid. You don't have anything to be afraid of. Fear Hallelujah. is false evidence appearing real. Or forget everything and run. No. But I have to combat that with faith. Everybody say faith. 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 What is faith? An acronym for faith. Forwarding all issues to heaven. <laughs> Forwarding all issues to heaven. That's the acronym for faith. Above all else, gorge the heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. Proverbs 4, verse 23. Is this word blessing y'all this morning? Yes. Everybody say, I'm protected. I'm protected. I'm protected. I'm protected. Isaiah 54, verse 17. Isaiah 54, verse 17. And I'm going to get ready to end. Isaiah 54, verse 15. Isaiah 54, verse 17. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But what? No what? But no weapon that is formed against you. Everybody say against you. Against you. Opposed or in opposition to you shall do what? Shall prosper. shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why in the world would it put a tongue in the category of a weapon? Ah. Ah. Y'all take your time with that scripture. Huh? Huh? See, it's talking about a physical weapon, but then it's also talking about the word, too, because that can be a weapon as well. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment you shall show to be in the wrong. Mm -hmm. there, this peace, righteousness, security, triumph over opposition is the heritage or the inheritance. Go to the next. Hallelujah. Of the servants of the Lord. Those in whom the ideal servant of the Lord is reproduced. This is the this is the righteousness or the vindication. Everybody say I'm vindicated. I'm vindicated. That means that I'm justified, just as if I never did. Which they obtain from me. This is that which I impart to them as their justification. Says, go to the next, the Lord. Everybody say that's his promise. That's his promise. I brought you here because there's a there's a. a there's a famous preacher by the name of John Hagee. John Hagee. Raise your hand if you ever heard of him before. Yeah, I was listening to his testimony. And his testimony was one day he was, he was getting ready to preach. And he says a guy comes in and he was standing, standing not too far from the pulpit. He comes up with a loaded gun in his hand. So as soon as he comes up, said so the guy says, I'm, I came in here to prove that your God is not real. 
said, I came in here to prove it today that he is not real. And, and, and he said, I, 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 right now, I'm going to give you the opportunity to say Satan is stronger than God. And he said, man, look. He said, my word says that no weapon that is formed against me will prosper. No weapon. He said, the guy said, I'm going to count to three. He said, the dude didn't even get to three. He said, at, at, at two, he started shooting. <laughs> Round it off. And he said, dude. He said, the dude was shooting. He was like almost point blank. And none of the bullets hit him. Or nobody else that was there. He said, the dude takes off running. As soon as he takes off running, one of the guys that he was ministering to, or a part of the congregation, he ran up and football tackled him because he was a, uh, he was a college football player. He said he hit the dude so hard that he knew that there was a force that was driven with it. It wasn't just a it wasn't it wasn't just a regular hit. He said he hit the dude so hard he crashed into the wall, and said the dude just just broke. He said, "Well, man," he said they came the next day, and he said he was standing right here, and he said he knew that the angel of the Lord was standing right in front of him. He said because the bullet was coming, and all of them came to one point, and then they all veered off. Hallelujah. He said the angel split them. That's the power of God. Amen. That is the power of God. And y'all have to believe him. Amen. You have to believe him. That is a supernatural boldness that, uh, that has to rise up on the inside of you. You got to be audacious with your faith. Amen. Is this making sense to y'all? There was a guy. Everybody say true story. True story. There was a guy who came in here. And there was a few people who were here now that can attest to what I'm about to say. There was a guy who ended up coming to the service. And he, you know, he ends up coming and... In the middle of praise and worship, I automatically kind of sensed that something wasn't going to be right. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all this to build your faith. I could automatic, I could automatically sense, but the spirit of the living God was so heavy on the inside of here that nothing can come through those doors that's not of the Father. So, so, so in the middle of praise and worship, this dude has a heart attack. Raise your hand if you were here and you've seen. Woo! Y'all here? My God! My God! Y'all were here too. Were y'all here that day? Y'all were here that day? He, he ends up, I'm talking about, boom. I'm like, dude, was, he, was, he was gonna be gone. And the boldness of the father rose up on the inside of me. And I said real loud, I said, not in here. Not in here. I said, in Jesus' name. And then before you know it, that spirit of death had to release him. And that man is still functioning. And he became a member of the church because of that. You, make a you have to know your authority as a believer. You have to know your authority as a believer. You have the authority of Jesus dwelling on the inside of you. Is this making sense to you? He said, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you, but you have to believe that. Luke 10, 19. Y'all bless God if y'all got something. Hallelujah. Everybody standing with me if you possibly can. Everybody standing with me. Hallelujah. Let's pray for social media. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you so much for your power. We thank you for your love, and we thank you for your faithfulness. We say right now in Jesus' name, God, that anyone, Father, who is gripped with a spirit of fear, anyone who is, 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 who is, who is being tormented in their mind, I say right now that, that, that there is a complete and a total severing that takes place, God. May they learn their true identity in you, and may they work worthy of the calling with which they were called. I bless you, Father, for filling them with the power of the Holy Spirit. Your word says in Micah 3, verse 8, but I am filled with power by the Spirit of God. It's you, Father, who fills us. And we thank you so much, Father, for just being the great God that you are. And I say that you will comfort your people and give them exactly what they need in this season. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. 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 Y'all praise God. Here we go.